This video is going to be a film study look at Bo Brad, the rookie undrafted free agent, Maryland native, if you don't know. One of the few bright spots from the Ravens, 30-7 to loss to the Packers in week three of the preseason. Really seemed like a, a throwaway game, hence my title for my reaction video, a Getaway Day. Actually going to focus the film on, on some plays from the last two weeks, to be honest with you. A very decisive player coming downhill at angles, good against the run. I like how he tackles very low. Now against some of the supreme athletic running backs in the league, would some of them just hurdle him or be able to sidestep him or break that tackle? I don't know. We haven't seen that film yet. He's a rookie, like I said, so he's only played in three games. Quite, I think, impressive yesterday against the Packers in terms of his tackling. Have limited uh, snaps or film to show here of his coverage. I think about six in particular uh, from the from the Green Bay game and against the Falcons. I have no idea what it'll look like when they do roster cutdowns. I think Tuesday night I will have a roster projection video out late tonight. Um, it's something I'm taking my time on because I, I want to give my best guess possible. And in some instances, I'm not sure about that fourth, fifth, sixth guy at, at certain positions, what the Ravens might be thinking. But nonetheless, Bo Brad, a, a Howard County native, River Hill High School, if you don't know uh, much about that, they have a, a extremely impressive uh, football program for a long time. So we're going back in time a little bit here for a moment. We're going to look at his tackles either either in the box or that are, that are not necessarily outside. This one's against the Falcons last week. It's a quarterback keep. And the thing I like about this is he's – up to the top side to the field, away from the point of attack. It's a read play down into the boundary, a mesh, and it probably a dual read with the tight end as well. Quarterback keeps it. And watch Brad. He's from the top side. He's going to slide underneath of the linebacker level, pretty much untouched because they're dealing with the, the linebackers in terms of a blocking scheme. And he gets there, helps hold Paddock, I think it is, to a three-yard gain. This week against the Packers, boundary side, safety put in a lot of conflict so far in preseason for us. I feel like we're seeing a lot of these formations. Tight end, running back into the boundary with a second receiver. So, yes, it's a two-by-two two set, two-by-two two formation. Two eligible receivers here, two eligible receivers here. But the fifth one is into the boundary. So you've got a lot going on, and I will show you the end zone angle here. But this is one of the reasons why, or one of the factors as to why there's so much man-on-one -on in quarters or split-field coverage defenses, because the read here is independent for Brad in terms of the tight end's block, and he fills downhill. It ends up being a three-yard gain by Wilson. Look, the Packers ran for 193 yesterday, and Brad tackled very well. I thought there were some other situations where we had some, some gap problems this is one that's created by the scheme. It's a nickel defense for the Ravens because we're facing 11 personnel. So you've got a D-gap player in the edge defender, a B-gap player in this three technique, two I, so A-gap a player, and then a, a B-gap player outside Ojabo who's wide. So the a linebackers, B-gap player, 57 Rigby, who I actually really like, Simpson's an A-gap player. So the conflict for Brad is, hey, maybe you're man on this tight end or you've some, got some kind of split field read and you've got C-gap responsibility. In this case, I think he does have C-gap responsibility. Very decisive and abrupt in his read. As soon as he sees that base block by the tight end, he's gone. Triggered downhill. Running back tries to be shifty a little bit and make it look like he's going to go away from that gap. Brad stays, keeps his gap integrity. Very smart player, low tackle, once again, three-yard gain. This time in the box, down into the boundary. It's a split zone concept. Yes, he does get kind of blocked into the play. The scheme is such that they're trying to give the running back an option. You've got the split zone, so this tight end is executing a kickout block up to the field side. Running back could veer it up underneath that kickout block, which is basically what he tries to do here. Also, it's a zone scheme by the offensive line, so potential for the running back to read some other gap and fit inside of it. And Brad just ends up being a plus one player. As soon as he sees that tight end go away, he's gone. He is triggered. And that's the only thing that prevents the, the X receiver or, or boundary side receiver from getting to him. Otherwise, if there's any hesitation at all, that receiver probably gets to him such that he is not able to be in the backfield and be as disruptive. Another Now, this one's later in the game, I believe. We're I believe we're talking about really late in the game, maybe six minutes left or something like that. But essentially, the same concept. You've got quarterback under center. Two tight ends, or maybe one tight end and a fullback, but I think two tight ends. As soon as this guy goes away to execute what basically would be a kickout block on split zone scheme, 
Brad fills the B-gap because the tackle stepped out to Tavius Robinson. So slightly different from a blocking scheme standpoint in that they're not, he's not, they're not leaving Tavius Robinson unblocked. They're basing him out, and Brad is filling in that inside gap right now. I would say he's, got, he's very disciplined. Whatever the read is, he's going to do it. There doesn't seem to be hesitation with him at all. This is uh, that same possession. Again, we're talking about five or six minutes left. Game is pretty much over, obviously. He's down into the boundary here. I think this is a tight end he's dealing with. Perhaps it's just a big receiver. He certainly doesn't look you know, too big to be a tight end. But Brad is very physical, able to get hands on. He seems to be a guy very comfortable up there near the line of scrimmage, in the box, quote-unquote, or someone like the second play that I showed you who is comfortable being at eight, nine yards depth, reading the tight end and the tackle, how, the blocking scheme, and then fitting inside that C-gap if needed. For whatever reason, this is, this is the one from two plays ago, the end zone angle, but you can see he gives you a very clear view, if you ask me, of how they block it. So the tackle is stepping to Tavius Robinson, tight end, who Brad probably initially had eyes on, is moving away from him, so split zone or potentially a hide concept to the opposite side. And Brad fills inside there perfectly, kind of sneaks in, sneaks in, defeats the blocking scheme. Uh, he's an impressive player. Does he get kept on the on the 53-man roster? I don't know. This was the most impressive tackle, obviously, of the day. Got everyone's attention. Upended the running back. He's the boundary side safety. It's 12 personnel. So two tight ends up to the top side. Ravens are in their nickel look, so we need someone, whether it's the boundary side corner or boundary side safety, to get involved. Packers are essentially combo or double teaming the edge defender, combo or double teaming the three technique, and Brad fits right in that space perfectly. I think it's Wiggins up there with him who would potentially be the force player. The running back decided to bounce a beautiful play, beautiful tackle if you ask me. You can see the, the nature of the two double teams, you know, at least to the play side. I'm not necessarily talking about this one, but we defeat the scheme by Brad inserting into the C-gap or inside of the first tight end. Outside scheme now, outside run plays, a jet sweep up to the top side, missed tackle. I think that's Pepe Williams. We have allowed people to get outside of number two, I would say five or six times in the preseason. You know, is it our scheme? Is it just the guys who we have on the field? You know, we don't know. We got a 17 game schedule coming up, so we'll find out. But it's a jet sweep to the receiver in motion. And when I say outside of two, I'm talking about that being the number two receiver. We have let teams get outside. We've got an opportunity to make this tackle. Don't get me wrong. This is Brad back, back here, by the way. Pretty, pretty deep as far as his alignment. And when he comes up, he's committed. I mean, he's he seems like a guy who you could see getting hurt. Because he runs 15 yards and delivers a shot because he just he's committed, he's not going to hold back. Boundary side safety again. This is yesterday against the Packers. Now, this is a two by two formation. Kind of illustrates the versatility that Trent, Trenton Simpson provides us in terms of if you want to call this two man, you know, robber, whatever you want to call it. You certainly got man on all these guys. This is Simpson on a tight end into the boundary. Man here, man here. And so we've got these two safeties. You know, what do we do with them? I think that, you know, beyond just Simpson playing man on the tight end is Brad is obviously reading the quarterback, but I think he's kind of leaving Simpson be one-on-one -on -one with the tight end, and he's looking for something like this. And you can, you know, whatever the quarterback's decision-making process was, he certainly was looking in that direction at first. Brad has taken it away by his reaction potentially cutting underneath of, you know, that slant, climb route, whatever, whatever you want to call it. It's a little bit too wide of an alignment by that number two to, to climb to the other side, to the, to the deep third. I'm talking about if he was lined up tighter and tried to get here. So I would more so call this like a slant, skinny post, whatever. The point is, Brad is a guy who has some experience playing on the back end at the third level of the defense. Limited film of him um, doing that here. This one, he's at risk. And, and you know, I would say that there's an, certainly an opportunity for uh, – I think it's Matthews, 86, to make the tackle, or make the catch, excuse me. Brad is beat, you know, up to the top side from the standpoint of the receiver eventually did get behind him. We're bringing heavy pressure. Adisa Isaac is, is free off the edge, and I think this is Evans who ends up getting the quarterback hit first, and Paddock has delivered the ball, kind of turned his back, just a, a throw and hope. 
no help for you, so you're threatened, you're in danger if you're the safety from the standpoint of 86 with this stem. We know the ball's got to be out quick. He could sit. He could bring this route across your face, or in this case, turn it into like a seven concept towards the pylon corner, whatever you want to call it. Back to last week, when I talk about getting outside of two, uh, this is technically one, but it's a stack twin, so it's kind of like who cares which guy catches the football and which guy's the blocker. For, our, for the purposes of what we're talking about, Brad is here. He does make the tackle, and it, you know, maybe it's out of bounds. I was listening to a Packers broadcast. I kind of like it. You're playing physical, playing until the whistle. But what I'm, what I'm referencing here, or the point I'm trying to make is we, whether it's the nickel defender against the Falcons on that jet sweep, or the outside corner can't give up the sideline. When we take on this block, there does come a de- there is a decision that has to be made sometime in the next like two or three steps. What am I going to do? Am I going to set it inside, same foot, same shoulder, and try to keep my outside arm free, or am I just going to be hell bent to knock the snot out of this guy? And I think that's what you got to do in this situation. Not every single play requires that type of take on. And I just don't think this is getting it done because we can't see anything. Number one on our initial take on number two, we also end up on the inside of that receiver. Brad, of course, does get credit for the tackle. Maybe you think it could have been a penalty. I really don't care. My point in focusing on this is we, as the outside corner, we've got to play this back inside to the free hitter, the free runner, which I think is the nickel slash strong safety rolled up to the field. This is, this to me has happened five, six times in the three preseason games. You know, is a, is it a byproduct of us not going over it enough? Probably not. It's probably just a byproduct of who we have on the field. Maybe our alignment being um, a little too tight here and just not doing a good job, I think, of, of running through this guy's face. My marker stopped working, forgive me, uh, of, not, of not running through this guy's face and forcing it inside. We can't end up on the inside there, period, where the force player on a two-man bubble. One interesting coverage that we saw last week, I, I didn't really talk about it, in, um, in any video format, this is a third and seven against the Falcons. Brad is now up to the top side, so he's to the field. You see he switches between to the to the field and the boundary often. This could be quarter, quarter, half or cover six, but we end up down here running with this vertical. We got no work here by Worley, so that could be why he slides to the middle of the field. This is one of those instances where quarter, quarter, half and, um, and cloud cover three can kind of end up looking similar. And I don't necessarily think this is cloud cover three, but we are working for depth here as Brad and getting over the top. 40, 41, excuse me, Worley is definitely working towards the middle of the field. And we've got man down here to the backside because, you know, we're on the backside of trips. Cloud cover three, in my experience, is a great coverage to trips. Quarter, quarter, half is what, you know, it is called now. It's, you know, different, slightly different variations of it. But in my opinion, Brad provides some versatility. Asking your safety to play the outside third and cover three is very different than playing middle of the field free safety. And again, I'm, I've got no problem if someone wants to say, Coach, that's just cover six, quarter, quarter, half, and man call on the backside. So that's why he's leaving here. But um, in any case, it, I, I'm old. And so the terminology that I originally learned would have been cloud cover three. Nearly an interception last week. In fact, it was originally ruled an interception. Now he's to the boundary. So there's some variation in what he's playing. They're, they're moving him around. Our boundary side coverages and our field side coverages oftentimes have independent calls. Clearly, this is a, a, a poorly thrown football by Paddock. It does get called back. That's why the video stops because the NFL, um, you know, once it's ruled incomplete, they're not going to show you the rest of the run because it's inconsequential. So no pressure in a quarterback's face. Maybe it's tipped here and that's why this ball ends up um, in brad's hands it doesn't the nfl rundown doesn't say you know pd normally at the end of the play it would have uh, brackets and the name of the player who got the pass defense but nonetheless this is an active athletic fast guy who can tackle we've seen a lot more work done by him a lot more things accomplished or, or impact in the box coming down to to make plays against the run Certainly than we have as a third-level defender, you know, play in the typical safety. I really like the player. I think that the Ravens have. I do think we still have a lot of depth. I know that it's fashionable and, and, and probably not too far 
off base after yesterday's game to say, hey, or do we have as good a second and third string guys as we do normally do in a given year? I got no problem with people who want to question that. In fact, I was very disappointed by yesterday's game. Bo Brad as an undrafted free agent. We drafted Sanusi Kane. I feel like Brad looks better in the preseason, small sample size, but he's been around the football more, if you ask me. Uh, Kane did have some pretty big hits, I think, against the Eagles, including one that drew him a penalty. You guys let me know what you think of, of both of those players. If there is a decision, if that is the decision for them, we've got a super talented group of safeties, but Arthur Millette is hurt and out for a while, so that throws a little bit of a complicating factor in it for me. Fun to see a Maryland guy, a Maryland high school kid and University of Maryland player have an impact in the preseason. I do wonder what other teams have seen out of him if they wouldn't look, if we did, you know, cut him or, or let him go Tuesday night, if they wouldn't look at picking him up as, a, as an option, a young athletic guy with some speed and burst who likes to come downhill and get involved against the run. Appreciate you guys' time, man. You let me know what you think of the plays that I picked to illustrate his skills. And if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this film study breakdown of Bo Brad, a rookie from Howard County, River Hill High School, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.